You are number one, Marley. Marley es la número uno. Hola, Olga. ¿Cómo estamos? Hi, Ali. <ríe> Hola a todos. Hello, everybody. Welcome to one more live on, on Friday. Hola, Olga. <ríe> Hola, Lita. Hola, Sue. Lucy, you did it. Hola María, hola Marley, ¿cómo estamos? Qué bueno verles nuevamente esta semana. Hola Lore, ¿no estás en la escuela Lore? Hola María, ¿cómo estamos? Hola María, muchas gracias. Hola Lizzy. Hello, Lizzy. <laughs> ¿Cómo estamos? How's everybody doing today? Hola, hola. Hello, hello. <laughs> bueno. Bienvenidos a todos los que están entrando. Hola, Lupita. Saludos y abrazos hasta México. ¡Oh, felicidades! ¡Feliz independencia para, me, para Chile! ¡Hola, Nick! ¿Cómo estás? Look at Nick speaking Spanish. Thank you, Nick. That's great. ¡Hola, Ruby! Thank you, Lisa. Con ganas de empezar. Ya, vamos a comenzar. Vamos a ver. Uh, les voy a mostrar el cubo. <laughs> Gracias, Lore. Good morning, Ruby. Hello, Yara. Hola, Yara. ¿Cómo estamos? Bueno, ¿por qué les digo? Por acá anda mi querida Yara Yagi. Hello, Rizu. Hola, Noemia. Hello from England. Hola, Lidia. Bueno, vamos a comenzar platicando un poquito. Ya vamos a traer a David Briel. Y el día de hoy estoy muy contenta porque vamos a tener al señor David Briel, un gran referente en el mundo del origami. ¿Y qué les puedo decir? Vamos a plegar su hermoso cubo. Miren, este es el cubo. Mi hijo tiene siete años y se enamoró de este cubo. Nice to see you, you miss cat. Es este cubo. Si utiliza un papel de 15 por 15, este es el tamaño del cubo. Miren. Acá está el cubo y el cubo se desarma en tres partes. Miren, son tres partes. Así que cada pieza tiene dos caras. Por eso vamos a necesitar solamente tres hojas de papel. ¿Ok? Así que acá está el cubo. Miren qué lindo. Pero no crean que esto se queda acá. No. Esta es la versión más chiquitita del cubo. Hay una versión más grande que David les va a mostrar donde se necesitan unos encastres especiales y él les va a dar la dirección de su página web donde él tiene cómo hacer los encastres para hacer algo como el cubo rubric. Um, I was telling everybody that today we're going to be with David Brill. I'm so happy he is here and he's going to be with us teaching you the Brillic Cube. The Brillic Cube is this cube. The size of paper I use for making this one is 15 by 15 centimeters and It's a great modular, just three pieces. As you can see, each piece has two faces of the cube. So we need um, three sheets of paper. This one I made it with 15 by 15 origami paper. And uh, this is a very simplified version of the cube. He's going to show you one version that looks like the rubric cube and you can move and you can manipulate but it needs some special attachments. So he's going to share also the link, how to make the attachments, because I know there are many, many people here who like difficult things, yes? So we're going to look for David right now. Let me see if I can find him. Um, okay, let's see if we can find David Briel. Let's see. Mm -hmm. No, he's not here yet. So let me communicate with him. 
this is the first time he's gonna have a live in Instagram. He's not used to that. So let me look for him here in Instagram. So get ready with your paper. If you would like to make a bigger cube, you can do it, okay? This one is just 15 by 15. Let me look for him. Um, here we go. Okay, I sent him a message. So if you see him entering, tell me, let me know, okay? Okay, so let's see. Okay, ah, estoy muy entusiasmada, créanme, y muy emocionada con este cubo, porque mi hijo tiene solo siete años y se enamoró de este cubo, así que vamos a ver. Este cubo es un buen elemento para captar lo que es la, el interés de los niños o de un maestro de matemática que está enseñando matemáticas. Es una buena estrategia este cubo que es muy versátil. Así que vamos a ver. Um, vamos a ver si el señor Brill entra por acá. Creo que le, saben que le cuesta entrar a lo que es mi vivo. Entonces, veamos acá. Brill Origami. Ya le enviamos la invitación. Here I am. Ah, hello, David. Hello. How are you doing? So nice to meet you all. Hello. Do I have to Assista? request to? Do I have to request to join? There you are. We are here. Everybody's looking okay. at you right now. Yeah. Welcome and thank you for accepting my invitation. It's a great pleasure and I'm de delighted to be here. Thank you very much. It's an honor for us to have you over here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I have a friend from Chile. She is a teacher and she works with little children. So she's very happy because today in Chile, they are celebrating the Independence Day. So it's a free day. So she says, I have to see David Real. So she's here. <laughs> Excellent. Well, hello. What's her name? Her name is Lorena. Lorena, hello. From Chile. Lorena. Nice Lorena, <laughs> para ahí te mando saludos, Mr. Brill. Okay. Um, I, I was, how can I tell you? I, this week I was looking up your work and I was finding a little bit more about your work. And oh my God, your resume related with origami is so extense. Mm -hmm. You are a member of British Origami Society. You have, I am. You have been present in many conventions around the world, including Japan, and uh, you have taught many workshops in different places around the world. That's a lot to say about you. I, indeed, well, I've ha I'm very lucky because I see that uh, the origami enthusiasts, it's like a big family. And uh, it, it's very easy to, to get to know these people. It's, it, it's, a, it's a strange, uh, contradiction so usually we when we when we do origami we're sitting at home alone and we just have a, a piece of paper and then um but then when you find uh the, the, there are many people around the world who do it too and even in your next street maybe there are people who do it too and when you find somebody else and you find a lot of people all together well, then that's a really a, a complete reversal. It's a complete change of the, the private world that we normally do origami in. And I, I find it very exciting. So I'm very happy to have traveled a great deal to many different countries, uh, thanks to origami, and have, to have made a lot of extremely good friends, uh, really uh, north, south, east and west. Yes. Yeah, that's yeah that's great it's like saying oh i am not alone there no. are more like me <laughs> Absolutely not. yeah i think also Mira, let's... i think also the pandemic has has in in many ways has helped oh yeah because many people many people can find that they are connected to people that they perhaps heard about and never met very very easily and it's taught us the pandemic has at least taught us 
that it's very easy to interact together, isn't it? Exactly, because imagine for me, it's very difficult. I'm here in Canada. How I am going to say, oh, I am going to take a class with uh, David Briel. In, he's in England and there is another. So it's right now that technology has given us a big opportunity really to interact. Yeah. 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 Miren, le estaba diciendo a David. David, él es una persona que tiene mucha experiencia en el área del origami. Él es miembro de la Asociación de Origami de Inglaterra, que es conocida como British Origami Association. Eh, él ha dado talleres a nivel mundial. Eh, ha ido a muchas convenciones. Y él me dice que el origami le ha abierto las puertas de poder encontrar más personas entusiastas como él que aman el origami. El doblar, el plegar en casa, nosotros solos, no es lo mismo que plegar con un grupo de personas. Y es cierto. Um, I, I love your work. You are so versatile, charismatic, and you have tried many fields. <laughs> you have tried many fields. You have folded objects. You have beautiful cars. You have folded um, modulars, people, animals. So... How do you do that? How do you say, okay, I want to fold an animal today, or today I feel like folding a modular? How do you choose the models uh, you want to create? I don't think it's a choice. I think it's um, it it just comes naturally. I don't I don't wait for inspiration. Some in, wait, inspiration comes to me if you like. So I don't sort of uh, um, search for a subject. Uh, sometimes you know that something in my uh, uh, in my day-to-day -day routine appears or I see something or hear something and I think well that would be interesting or I have an idea but I find very often uh, early in the morning I have I wake up and I in my, the very first few minutes of waking I have some oh what would happen if I did this or you know how would it so a lot of it is experimentation for example uh, the other day I saw on Instagram I follow a an artist who's not he doesn't he's not an origami artist but he makes a very beautiful animals from um a corrugated cardboard mm -hmm. and i'm sure there's a lot of glue so it's really got nothing to do with origami but what he does have is a great sense of he gives a great uh, amount of life to the subject and he i saw the other day um uh, an image of a cat which was stretching Wow. Uh, as, as if he'd just woken up. And this was very, very expressive. And I, I have an origami cat, a number of origami cats. And I thought maybe it's possible that I can modify my cat uh, to look something like this. I, I'm still working on it and I don't know whether I shall succeed. But I mean, these the ideas come just um, uh, casually without any um, real, uh, with, without me seeking the... Uh, uh, the, the idea they just arrive so i don't make a um i don't have a determined now i must fold today you know what can i fold that it isn't like that it, it just happens yeah so that does that answer your question excellent yeah that's beautiful and i love what you say about the cats because that's true that can inspire you especially your cat i love your cat if you tell me which is your favorite design made by me i will tell you the cat because i'm a cat lover and your cat is yeah. so beautiful <laughs> I'm also a cat lover, uh, although I don't, sadly I don't have a cat anymore. My two cats are, uh, passed away about 10 years ago and we haven't replaced them. It's, yeah. uh, but anyway, that's a story. Uh, but I still love them. I'm still, I find them intriguing personalities. They're different from dogs. They are more independent. They're more, they, you can't really train a cat. But I found them very, um, when I had my cats, I was very, they were personalities and they were part of my household. So. There we are. Yeah, they are a very part, important part of the family. Wow. Miren, les pregunté a Mr. Brill. Él es una persona muy versátil y muy carismática. Él ha diseñado objetos. Eh, él ha diseñado personas, modulares, animales. Entonces yo le pregunté, ¿cómo es que hace él para decidir qué plegar? Y él me dice que él no decide qué plegar. Eh, él se siente inspirado. Y, por ejemplo, él ve un gato 
y él dice, ah, voy a modificar mi gato y él con la pregunta de, ¿y si hago esto? Entonces esa es la forma en la que él pliega diferentes modelos. Es amante de los gatos, así que tiene un gato precioso. Y dice que tiene un amigo que hace animales de origami corrugado, que es otra técnica, y así es como él se inspira. Um, I know you have many, many, many different uh, models. Do you have uh, any model in particular, for example, or any kind, for example, uh, modulars, animals? What do you prefer to design? Modulars, animals, people? I, I, I don't have a preference, really. I mean, I, I think it's, I may, always remember, you, you've heard of Paul Jackson, who's a, an old friend of mine who now lives in Israel. He used to live in England. and. Um, Uh, he, I remember him saying, people always ask me, what is your favorite model? Or which, is, which model you, do you like to fold? And he, his answer was, the next one. Like Mr. Bachetta, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so I don't really have a favorite. I mean, there are some that obviously that I'm very happy with um, and some that I'm proud of, some that I'm not so proud of, some that uh, I feel are, you know, maybe... Uh, uh, not very direct or too complicated or or they don't they're, they're not fully satisfactory uh, but it, you know I, i i don't have to show them if I, i'm not completely satisfied with the the end result so i don't I, the truth is i really really don't have a favorite there are there are things that i there are some things which i do which i i'm proud of others less so and that's shall we just leave it at that <laughs> Yes, there are some of your designs that are amazing. I was, I don't like, uh, for example, objects, but you have a race car. When I saw it, I was like, what? That race car is amazing. And uh, I said, wow, it looks like a real one. And I saw a knight that you had, yeah. the knight was riding a horse. By the way, your horse is so beautiful. I love your horse. You have different versions of the horse, I, right? Well, I've Again, it's, it evolves. It's very old design. Originally, I, I discovered the horse. The, the horse evolved from a, a long series of what had went before. Uh, and uh, the first horse that I made was rather different from the one which is popular. Uh, but they, they go through uh, uh, changes from time to time, a bit like this stretching cat that I saw. Uh, we, we, we live in the country here. And we see horses in the fields quite often. And I, I saw some of them, they were, uh, had their heads down mm -hmm. uh, from the grass. Yeah. And I thought, I wouldn't, and it occurred to me, this is really strange how long the horse's neck yeah. becomes. When the, head, the horse's head is going up, not when it's resting with the head here, mm -hmm. it has, the, the, the neck seems really quite short. But when it goes down, it seems to go maybe two, three times longer than, than when it's erect. And I thought maybe I can somehow change the, the pose of the animal. So with the heads down. So I, you, you, in, your, in your fantastic video that you did to promote this event, I saw you took some pictures. I th incidentally, I found it completely over the top. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for making my work easy. You have so many beautiful pictures of everything. Well, I. I I suppose the other thing is I, you know, I've been involved with the origami community for a good number of years. So yeah. I, I first joined the British Origami Society in, in 1974. Oh. Um, and uh, I became creative, you know, very quickly after that. I mean, I, before I joined uh, the BOS, mm -hmm. <clears throat> I had experimented with a few designs of my own, but they weren't very satisfactory. But then when I joined the BOS and met these other people that we were talking about before i was really it was like lighting a, a fire you know yeah and very quickly i had a lot of ideas which were spilling out uh and again some good some bad some that i'd rather not talk about <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then i then the, i uh, at this very first meeting i uh, i met Uh, another, uh, a, a, an old friend who's become a, a very old friend at the very first meeting that I went to, which was in, in London in 1975, I met an Italian called Roberto Morassi. Roberto Morassi. And he is, he, he is the founder of the Italian association called the Centro Diffusione Italiano, uh, uh, Origami, Centro Diffusione mm -hmm. Origami, CDO, based in Florence. 
and he became a lifelong friend. And uh, I, I, very soon after I visited him, and I then soon found that it was very possible in Europe, it's, e it's easy to, to travel to other countries, England's close to Europe, and we can quickly jump on a flight and relatively quickly be in another city. Yeah. And I, I did this a lot. Yeah. And after that, I um, expanded, expanded my horizons. I, I had an ambition to go to Japan to meet some uh, some people who I'd sent, had correspondence with by letter. And I thought it would be wonderful to actually meet these people, which is what I did. And I, I had one of the um, reasons I went to Japan was because of uh, the people, uh, a man who is, who you, I'm sure you've heard of called Akira Yoshizawa, who was um, considered the founder of origami. And yeah. even in those years, I, he seemed to be, to me, an old man. <clears throat> and I thought, oh, maybe I should visit him before it's too late. And I, I did, and it wasn't anything like too late you because he. Met him. Oh, I met him on several occasions. Yeah. Wow. <clears throat> Excuse me. Don't worry. So that's Mr. Big Mr. Man, you, you can drink some water right now, and I'm going to Thank translate you. Yes. a little so you bit. Me, you are I'm here. talking too much, so uh, so ask ask me ask me some questions, and I'll I'll clear my throat. <laughs> I love that. Miren. El maestro David Britt me acaba de contar algo que no todas las personas eh, se puede decir que lo van a hacer. Él conoció a Akira Yoshizawa, lo conoció y estuvo con él varias veces, imagínense qué emoción. Él dice que él comenzó eh, en el origami en 1974, él se une a BOS, que significa British Origami Association. Y para ese entonces, él tenía ideas de algunos modelos de él pero eran ideas un poco eh, rústicas. Cuando él conoce más personas, como que comienza a plegar, él comienza a tener más ideas, comienza a viajar a bastantes países del mundo, quería ir a Japón, y él va a Japón a conocer a bastantes amigos con los cuales se intercambiaban correspondencia. De esta forma, dice él que conoce al maestro Akira Yoshizawa. Imagínense qué honor. Y, por ejemplo, él ha diseñado unos caballos preciosos. Él tiene dos caballos, uno que está erguido y uno que tiene el cuello abajo. Él vive en Inglaterra, en un área que es campo. Entonces, él puede ver caballos en los pastizales, corriendo, y dice que a él le llamó ver la atención cuando el caballo está comiendo. Vio que el, el cuello era largo. Entonces, por eso él diseñó un caballo de esa forma. Wow, you make me so you, you you made me so happy when you told me that you met Akira Yoshizawa because that's uh -huh. something that not everybody can say. Really. That's something really important. Yeah. Unfortunately, he he um, he he is not was not the easiest person to deal with. Oh. <laughs> because uh, I had a, a, several other Japanese friends that I formed uh, friendships with through correspondence, and uh, one of these was. Um, Mrs. Toshi Takahama, mm -hmm. who you might have heard of, and also uh, the family of the Momotani family. Mm -hmm. So, Ehide Momotani and mm -hmm. Sumiko Momotani. I had a, before I went to Japan, I had a big correspondence. Mm -hmm. And then, so when I arrived in Japan, uh, one of the first people I met apart from these two was um, uh, Makoto Yamaguchi. Makoto Yamaguchi. And and he was a, a young man. Mrs. Takahama was quite old lady. And she said, oh, you need, you need to be with somebody who is more your age. And I was then in my 30s. Mm -hmm. And uh, so she, she knew Makoto Yamaguchi. And so she said, he's a friend of mine. And I introduced you to him. And he can take you to places that I can't go. And so, again, I became a, a, a lifelong friend of Makoto Yamaguchi, who has a a large number of books and has a you know has a big influence in the origami world yeah yes so uh and uh and i also met uh the first time i went i met the fujimoto the shuzo fujimoto because i had, had, had correspondence with him uh and uh he was a very shy man he, he gave me a huge uh paper box an origami box a huge box full of models which wow. I, I didn't i didn't know how to, to to bring them home because i only had one suitcase <laughs> so in the end what I, did you do with the box oh, well I I, I I i sent them home by post ah. so the hotel where 
after I stayed, they had a packing facility so I could uh, arrange to send. I was given loads of presents. Wow. The Japanese were, the Japanese are very generous. They, 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 they exchange gifts very quickly, very easily. And I knew this, but I didn't know, I had no, no idea that I would receive as many gifts as I actually did. And I, it was a real headache. I didn't know how I could um, send these home or get them home. I certainly didn't have room in my suitcase. So I decided that I would uh, send a number of parcels. I think I made three or four parcels, which I then sent back, back home to England. And they eventually arrived after three months or something. They were, it was expensive to post. So they went surface mail, but uh, they eventually arrived. Yeah, yeah. Japanese post is really good. So they so arrived. Oh, that's I, so exciting. So I think that uh, the, the origami world is really very small and it's getting smaller. You know, it's a big place, of course, but it's very easy uh, uh, to make contact with people in different countries. And it's, a, it's an exciting world when you do. Exactly. Yeah, that's true. Oh, my God. I feel so happy, Radian. What an honor for me to be talking to you and you tell me those stories, those anecdotes. Oh my God, that's amazing. Let me, tell, let me tell this to people because they're going to get very excited too. <laughs> <laughs> I've got loads of stories. I could keep you talking all night, but I know there's not all, we don't have all night, but. Uh... <laughs> Miren qué lindo platicar con una persona que tiene tanto que contar. Él dice que Intercabin envió lo que es mucho correo, muchas cartas con amigos en Japón y se le presenta la oportunidad de viajar a Japón y conoce a una señora de apellido Takayama, que en ese momento ya era una señora muy grande y ella le dice, te voy a presentar a alguien que es más de tu edad para que esa persona te lleve alrededor y puedas conocer y puedas eh, hablar más de origami y le presenta nada más ni nada menos que a Makoto Yamaguchi y los dos son buenos amigos y él los sacó por todas partes. Le presentó al señor Shuso Fujimoto, imagínense. Y dice eh, David que los japoneses son tan amables, tan generosos, que le dieron tantos regalos que él se afligió porque solo llevaba una maleta. Y Shuso Fujimoto le dio una caja grande llena de modelos de origami. Entonces lo que él hizo fue enviar todo desde Japón hasta Inglaterra. Y incluso conoce a Tomoko Fuse. Ellos son amigos muy cercanos. Así que imagínense qué lindo. Wow. That's, look at all the hearts people are sending. Because they are, they are also like, wow, they are surprised. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm very lucky. I mean, um, uh, and you mentioned uh, uh, Tomoko Fuse, who is really a very close friend. Um, and uh, she, she, uh, we see each other not often enough because of the mileage, but I've met her in a good number of places, not in Japan. So mm. she's been to England. I've been, I've traveled to meet her in, um, in, in the USA, or I've been to events where we've both been present. Yeah. Uh, I remember there was one occasion she had an invitation to go to India. There was a group in India, in uh, Mumbai. <clears throat> and she was rather nervous about uh, going alone. And so she, <laughs> husband, but she also said, look, is anybody, would anybody like to join me in, in India? And I thought, well, at the time I was traveling everywhere I possibly could. I had uh, lots of free time and I had enough money, fortunately, to be able to afford the journey. And so I went there as well. And uh, we had a, an amazing time. And so really the the boundaries of origami are they, there aren't any we can uh we can meet uh people very easily and make friends with these people just everywhere so we're very lucky yeah so i am going to cross my fingers i can meet you someday okay please yeah i'd like to come uh, well i've been to canada i've been to canada i've been to toronto but i haven't been to i've only been in south america i understand most of the people here <clears throat> are from South America. So I've been to, only to Colombia. Colombia. I went, I went to Bogota maybe five or six years ago for a convention there. And it was, I, I'll be honest, it was an ambition to go to South America. And uh, so I had this invitation and I had, a, I, again, I had a really marvelous time. Uh, my wife, uh, when she, uh, my wife said, um, are you, she, I said, uh, would you like to come? She said, I don't want to go to Colombia. It's too dangerous. 
But anyway, I was assured by friends uh, that it was all okay and that the people would, would keep me safe. And it, in fact, I don't think it's anything like as dangerous as, as it was people think it is. Yeah. And when they got home, she said, oh, I wish I'd gone. I wish I'd gone. So. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> wow. Miren, él dice que el mundo del origami es un mundo tan grande, pero a la vez tan pequeño. Porque a través de las convenciones, ustedes pueden conocer personas, grandes diseñadores, eh, y él cuenta que él ha conocido a Tomoko Fuse y ahora son amigos muy cercanos. Y dice que una vez en una reunión, eh, Tomoko Fuse la invitaron para ir a la India. Hola, Nico. Y viene y ella no quería ir sola a la India. Entonces preguntó si alguien la quería acompañar. Y él dice que él se animó porque tenía tiempo, tenía los recursos. Entonces se fue a la India con Tomoko Fuse. Dice que ha viajado a muchos países del mundo y que en Sudamérica él fue a Colombia. Entonces eh, su esposa no quiso ir a Colombia porque le dijeron que era muy peligroso. Pero él se animó a ir a Colombia. Y cuando estuvo en Colombia, en una convención, le gustó mucho Colombia y no era peligroso como le habían dicho. Entonces, cuando le contó a la esposa, la esposa se arrepintió de no haber ido a Colombia. You know, you're a very lucky man because, because of your wife. I'm telling you because of your wife. Oh, my, husband, my husband, for example, he doesn't fall even an airplane. But your wife, she loves origami. She yes. falls. Yep. She created curly cue. Yep. You are so lucky. Yeah, I, it's true. And in many ways, she folds more accurately than I do. She's very, very precise. As, as she folds very perfectly, not as neatly as me. Or, uh, I don't fold as neatly as her. Uh -huh. so, uh, so there you are. But uh, yes, I'm lucky. But in fact, as she has moved away a little bit now, she, uh, she, although she has a strong interest in origami, she, we met because of origami. Uh, but her, her, she's devoted to knitting, um, uh, and she's she's designed a good number of things, including a, a special technique, uh, which she's published a book about. Which you can, if you're interested, if you're a knitter, you can find out about that. So look for Asia Brill. If you can get a book through Amazon, mm -hmm. uh, you can you can find Asia's book, which is called D Stitch. But that's just like you. You enjoy doing many things. Yeah. You have many hobbies. Yeah. Well, I, it, it's interesting because I was very fortunate. I, I used to work when I worked. I worked for a bank in England, mm -hmm. but I, I didn't enjoy very much my job. And for me, my my real life was. At, outside my work hours before and after work and so i was very fortunate that i was able to uh, leave my job when i was uh, 49 years old mm -hmm. yeah since then I've, I've 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 been able to do the things which i really wanted to do so which which are uh, mainly origami also i'm a as you know i'm a painter you see my paintings here that one. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I at the moment i'm very busy be because of lockdown uh, because of the pandemic, certainly at the beginning of last year, uh, we I found it a, a, a great opportunity to go because nobody was around. I was I could be alone in the in the uh, a countryside to paint, oh. uh, and uh, so and I, I I still have this impetus. Uh, I still have this energy uh, to do it, and uh, it's I think a lot of it is. It's a motivation to uh, to improve, to succeed. It, we're not just no, nobody wants to stand still. We want to get better. We want to improve at whatever we're doing, don't we? And that, that is my motivation in in all these things, really. Yeah, and you are good in origami. You are good in painting. I think you are good in everything. You do. I don't know. <laughs> you, make, you make me too. You make me too much an angel. <laughs> Mire, le pregunté, a, le digo al, a, a, al maestro David Drill que él es una persona muy afortunada porque yo tengo mi esposo, por ejemplo, pero él no pliega ni un barquito siquiera. En cambio, él, su esposa se llama Asha Brill y ella también es origamista. Ella creó la técnica del curly cue y es una mujer tan, pero tan eh, versátil que le gusta hacer muchas cosas. Ahora en este momento está trabajando en lo que es el crochet, knitting. Entonces está trabajando en eso. Es muy buena. Está dando cursos, talleres de lo que es crochet. Y está, ya va a sacar sus libros de crochet, imagínense. Y 
con respecto al maestro David Reel, él ama pintar. Si ustedes se fijan, la pintura que está ahí atrás es pintura que él hizo porque es un excelente pintor. Um, many people don't know about your paintings. Mm -hmm. And um, can you show us some of your painting, the one that you have there or your origami? Yeah. Uh, maybe I can. Uh, so I just take the camera and we I turn the... Um, the, the, uh, the this is... Las pinturas que él tiene, esas pinturas él las ha hecho. Él las ha hecho. Todas las pinturas. Miren. Wow, the one of the horses. That's beautiful. Cow, horses or cow. cows. Cow. Wow. Yeah. Qué lindo. So this is all of these, most of these paintings are very close to my house here. So, wow. Amazing. And there are lots of trees, as you see. Yeah. Your paintings are so beautiful. Uh, that's all in here i'll show you this is this is a nice one this is this is not by me this is a a painting not a, it's, it's actually an engraving um a... that's beautiful this is a picture of me of me up the top right mm -hmm. with my with my big belly and my paintbrush <laughs> and this is this is uh asia arriving and she yeah. has she has her hand uh a uh, a basket with a, a small a baby now in fact she she has a son but he was a bit older than that taro got it wrong and you can see here he, the, here is a cat the cat and he, he is he is winding up the draw drawbridge into my house and the other oh, cat yeah. is i have is up here you can see so this is a story yeah. about about asia and me that's beautiful <laughs> who did that one uh this is uh this so this is tomoko fuse's husband Tom He's oh, he's he, yeah he's a he's a, a, a an artist too but he he is a painter but mainly a printer so he he makes um, uh, prints like this I, I've got a few others but I won't bore you with that so there we are those I've got plenty more and you can find some on my um, on my um, Facebook and Instagram feed I I post them fairly regularly. Yeah, because when I was looking at you, when I was looking for you in Instagram, I thought that I would find a lot of origami and surprise, holy painting. <laughs> <laughs> yes, wow. Miren, todas esas pinturas que él ha hecho, él dice que son pinturas afuera de su casa, lo que él puede ver, las vacas, lo que es el ganado, los caballos. Y él tiene una pintura muy querida que es esa que, que, dio, que, que les mostró que es en blanco y negro. Esa pintura la hizo el esposo de Tomoko Fuse, que es pintor. Entonces él me estaba explicando que en la pintura está el maestro Abril, dice que su, ahí está él con su panza grande. Están sus dos gatitos y está también su esposa. Those beautiful paintings, wow, they are wonderful. Thank you. And I am, I'm going to ask you for another painting. Okay. If you could yes. show us some of your origami. Yes, sure, by all means. Yes. Okay, so I, so I have, um, just over here, I'm just going to turn my camera around again. So you can see. Ahora nos va a enseñar su trabajo de origami. Is, is, um, display case i open the doors to um for so so I, we, we oh that, that's the, oh that's the cover of your book yeah, so this is uh, st george and the dragon yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. so this is um the, this these two are this is my design this is a this is a representation of a, a japanese box called masu box the mas oh. which, which is made out of wood in fact and ah. this this so this comes is made from a single A4 sheet, mm -hmm. and this this is the Asia's modification. It's the same thing, but with many of the same inside. So these are, are all they separate. You see, mm -hmm. so the inside wow. there are many. So we, she calls this uh, Masu Matryoshki, mm -hmm. like the the Russian doll because Asia is Russian. Yeah. So you can that's that. So this is also this is Asia's work here. Oh, qué lindo. So qué here lindo. we have, these are some uh, geometric things. So we have a, a, cat. a cat. this is a, a small cat. He and he, down. When he's looking, you know, he's looking down here at the, the bird the below, you see. Bird, yeah. And there's, a, there's another cat here stalking oh, the bird. And then these, these, all of these things here are uh, flexing puzzles. Oh, 
Oh. Uh, Miren, esos son rompecabezas. Miren qué lindos. And this one too is a, a like a flexing puzzle. That's beautiful. So this is um this is a representation of a um a, a plastic mm -hmm. puzzle called mm -hmm. uh, a, a Yoshimoto cube. Wow, Yoshimoto which, cube. Mm -hmm. So which you can you put together to make a. Uh, it's made, it's eight little cubes which each did each divide into um, two. Yeah. So it has something similar to the thing we're going to fold a bit later. Yeah. So down here oh, we've got um, uh, a witch and uh -huh. an angel. <laughs> Which and an angel, well, and these are also. Okay. So this is this is also these are larger uh, construct. These are these also come apart, and this it makes a, a two a geometric shapes. Meaning? These are other sort of everyday objects. Some some modular stars, yeah. book, yeah. cigarettes, Your horses that and you down, have. Down but the boss and the horse and, and the giraffe. That white horse is amazing. Oh, with that, what is that? The horse is with a little cat. Yeah, so the dog actually... is looking up at oh, the, the horse. Oh, yeah. Miren que belleza ese caballo. Wow. So there, so there we are. <gasps> oh, but... your work is amazing. So I'm, put, I'm trying to change this back to me. Okay, okay, okay. that's that. Thank you so much for it's showing us your collection. Oh my God, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Everything is beautiful. <laughs> Very good. You so, know so that there are some people here asking, um, does your wife have Instagram? Because they want to, there are many people here who love yeah. knitting, yeah. so yeah. She, they want to follow her. So again, Asia Abril, uh, right? Asia Abril, that's it. If they look for Asia Abril, they, they will find her. Yeah. Para las personas que me preguntaron por el Instagram de la esposa de él, que hace crochet, este es el nombre de ella, Asia Brill. Así que búsquenla a ella en Instagram y la van a encontrar. Así que ese es el nombre de ella. Imagínense. David, congratulations. Your work is beautiful. Your experience is beautiful. Your stories about origami, they are amazing about all the people you have met. That's wonderful. I'm very, very lucky. You are a lucky man, yes. And thank you for sharing with us all your experience. It's it's great. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much. <laughs> I wanted to ask you about the cube we are going to fold today. Okay. Um, do you have the cube that modifies the yes, one that has a model? Okay, I'm going to go to the other position where I can show you more easily. Okay. Excellent. Right, so let's have a look. See if I can do this right. So this is. Miren, este que vamos a plegar en este momento es el cubo versión simplificada, porque solo tiene tres módulos. Pero con estos módulos ustedes pueden hacer una belleza de cubo. Ahí se los va a mostrar él. Miren todo lo que pueden hacer. Este es el que vamos a hacer en este momento. Miren. So this is. So this is the, the three units that we're going to fold exactly. uh, later on uh, which fit together like this mm -hmm. which are not mm -hmm. too difficult and i hope you'll enjoy so this is uh, the, the more complicated version which i call it brillic cube because it it reminds me of a rubik cube mm -hmm. because this thing you can flex it and you can make the colors change oh. or you can make the, the shall i say you can reposition the cube so that they're made up of different colors mm -hmm. so right or something like the rubik cube where the exactly. you scramble the colors here mm -hmm. we can do the same thing with origami without but it's it, I, unfortunately even though uh, it looks it looks more simple than the uh, rubik cube I, I don't really know how to to get it back together in the right position very easily you have to play yeah. with it it's playing it's, it's, yeah it's, it's matter of it's, playing yeah how and you, many models do you need to make that well, so one? For each of each of these cubes obviously is three uh, sheets. Mm -hmm. So each of these individual parts of this uh, construction is is three pieces like this. Okay. But then you need a, a a joint between. So there are in fact twelve cube units, mm -hmm. but you also need twelve connectors. Uh -huh. So okay. in fact. So there are 24 pieces of paper. There are uh, 
24, um, uh, uh, no, wait a minute, there are 12 um, uh, squares to make the cubes, but then yes. you need 12 strips of paper, which are, it's a quarter of one square. So you take a, a standard square and you divide it into four mm -hmm. uh, vertically to make a strip. So a four by one rectangle. So that, that part there becomes the connector, which connects each of the mm -hmm. individual units to make this, this bigger construction. And, and you can find instructions. bigger construction, you have a special yeah, you can, on your website, you, right? You can find it on my website, yes. Excellent. So, so please have a look. It's, it's brilliantorigami.com. You can find it, oh, I hope, but by, by searching through um, the, um, the, 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 uh, what the uh, links on the, on the page. You'll find diagrams and you'll find the link to the, to the Brillic cube. Okay. Miren, el cubo so que vamos we... a hacer so... es este cubo pequeño, pero si ustedes pliegan 12 de estas unidades, ustedes pueden hacer ese. Pero ese necesita unos, eh, unos conectores especiales y esos conectores él muestra cómo hacerlos en su página de Brilliant Origami. BrilliantOrigami.com, ustedes pueden ir allí. Ahí tiene él lo que son diagramas y está el diagrama de este, cómo hacer este. Así que preparen su papel porque vamos a plegar el cubo. Ah, y vamos a plegar los tres módulos al mismo tiempo. So right now we're going to fold the cube yeah. and we're going to be working with the three modules at the same time, right? That's it. So you need, you need three, these are 15 centimeter squares, which are obviously like all origami paper, white on the other side, mm -hmm. like this. Okay. So as, I, as you said, we're going to make them all simultaneously. So we end up with the three pieces at the same time. And That's it gives you, it helps you remember each of the steps if we repeat it twice. Yeah. Yes. So let's begin. So let's the first begin. thing we're going, the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to start actually with the colored side facing. Vamos a, like a trabajar los tres al mismo tiempo. Así que listos. Vamos a comenzar color arriba. Así que todos al mismo tiempo las tres unidades repitiendo los pasos. Okay, mm -hmm. Master Dave. So the first thing we're going to do is fold in half with the starting from the colored side, so that you fold in half so that the, the new rectangle you have is white. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm going to put in both the horizontal and the vertical. Okay. A plegar por mitad, horizontal y verticalmente. El color blanco queda arriba. And I'm going to, to do that obviously with all three. Hagamos lo mismo con los tres papelitos, okay? And as you can imagine, because this is a, a geometric shape, I don't really need to tell you that you need to be very accurate, you need to be very precise. Exactly. So try not to make any mistakes okay. and make sure that the, the edges line up exactly mm -hmm. before, you, before you crease. It's obvious. Oh. You, know, you know this. Yeah. All of you origami enth enthusiasts know this for sure. <laughs> Dice él que como es una figura geométrica, tienen que ser bien exactos. Así que alinear todo antes de plegar bien lo que es el, el, el doblez. I love the way you are teaching it because folding it all simultaneously. Sim sim yeah, because... Stuff. At the same time, you know, it's, uh, it's better. You learn it easily. Indeed, and it's very boring to have to... When you complete one and then do the whole thing again, if we do them simultaneously, then we get... We get a result simultaneously. Okay, so the next thing to do is to turn these round so that the open edges are pointing towards us here, like this. So, that they, so you open it this way. And then you take on the, the first unit, on all units in fact, we fold this up to the central um, crease, the, the central folded edge. Like this, there's one. Okay, a plegarlos todos al mismo tiempo, miren. There are, there's the second. Mm -hmm. And here's the third. Qué bueno, miren al mismo tiempo. You know, I am going to practice that word simultaneously, simultaneously. It was very hard to say. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, so and now we, what we have to do now is unfold that back to this shape so that you have the this lower edge folded to the center. We're going to do that. Can you all see that okay? I hope so. Okay. Eh, pregunto, ¿todos estamos bien? ¿Vamos bien hasta el momento? Lancen los corazoncitos y todo está bien. ¿No hay preguntas? Right. So now we're going to turn these over so that we can just see the color. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to rotate so that the folded edge is on the left hand side here. Okay. And then I'm going to fold these up to the central Perfect. crease line here, the central horizontal crease line okay and i'm going to turn that round and do the same thing here okay very precise nice of course yes sean precisos todos al mismo tiempo miren and also i use the index finger nail here to 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 press the creases really flat i don't believe in origami tools because <laughs> the, these are our these are our tools. Yes. So. <laughs> I love that. Miren, él so, dice que él no, no cree en las herramientas de origami, así que él utiliza su uña del dedo pequeñito para plegar bien lo que es el, el borde. Miren. Yeah, that's so, true. So, in fact, I remember it's when I was a child, it was one of the things that attracted me that I could do origami from without any uh, equipment yeah, so i just, just had to have i i always had um this the raw material which is paper yeah and i always had my hands so but very often i was when i was a child i had uh craft books mm -hmm. uh, manual activities and it says how to make something how to make a a car or how to make a an animal mm -hmm. and it and there was always a list of things that you needed before you started and in fact, when I started this, these activities, I didn't have something, one of those things I never had and couldn't get. And therefore I was always frustrated, but that was never the case with origami because I always had paper and I always had my hands. And, yeah. and that in, even today is one of the big attractions for me for, for origami that, that we, yeah. d we only need this and this. So, exactly. and, you know, I have some tools here which I use just to help teaching, but we don't really need this. We don't need this. We don't need scissors. We don't need glue. So everything that we need is here. And so when I first went to started going to conventions in some places, people came with a, a box of tools. Said, What's that for? What is that for? <laughs> anyway, so I hope I'm not embarrassing, embarrassing anybody who has uh, a tool, an origami toolkit, but I don't, I don't actually believe in them. I don't okay, so I'm now going. So I'm now going to undo these uh, two sides from from the center on all of them. Hoy lo vamos a abrir y después le cuento lo que me acaba de decir porque estuvo matado de la risa. And I'm I'm going to turn over to the side which is where you can see the white and the color, and I'm going to rotate the paper so that the folded edge is once again on the left hand side. Okay. And I'm now going to, to fold this bottom edge here up to line along the, 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 the border here with the color and the white. But I'm only going to crease that, 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 that up, up until that crease there. I'm not going to put the crease here. Okay. So the crease only goes to the first crease line. So this is uncreased this side. Okay. Then, I'm going to, then I'm going to turn that round and do the same thing on the other edge in mirror image. Excellent. Miren, cuando hagan eso, plieguen hasta la primera división. Miren, no lo vayan a hacer completo. Solamente es la primera división la que importa. Lo vamos a hacer en los tres, okay? So then we do the same thing on the other mm -hmm. two. So, uh, recently, I, um, I, I think that I, I like or, uh, origami unit modular work. I, I like to call it unit rather than modular for some reason, probably because Tomoko Fuse, mm -hmm. uh, she uses the term unit origami rather than modular origami, and I oh. rather prefer it. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but I like them when they have a sm the smallest number of units. Yes. So 
I like to, I like to have uh, it, it. Obviously, it's you can make huge balls, geometric constructions mm -hmm. with th thirty and sixty and ninety pieces, but it takes a lifetime. Yeah, and I like. I, I'm afraid I'm a bit impatient. I want to see a result a bit more quickly than that. Exactly. Yeah, that's true. So we have three the same with just these diagonals here. We don't continue the, the crease up here. There's no crease in the center up at the top. So we continue on with the next steps. Mm -hmm. So once again, I'm going to put the folded edge to the left and I'm going to make the same raw edge. I'm going to fold it up to line up with the crease that we just made. I'm going to make sure that the crease goes exactly to this point here. Yes. And I'm going to crease all the way across like that. Or, or and and you, you can crease all the way because it, it, you, it's, in, it's okay to crease the whole, uh, the whole crease yes. so that it lies yes. flat. Yes. Hoy sí van a plegar todo, miren. Van a plegar todo y dice que sean muy exactos en esa esquinita. Las esquinitas tienen que ir desde donde él está mostrando. Miren, sean exactos. And make sure you've got a, a sharp crease here, that the crease goes exactly to this point. Miren, so, la, tiene que ir exactamente hasta ese punto, no menos, sino que hasta ese punto. So I'm going to go exactly to that corner. Uh -huh. Same thing over here. Yeah, heat accuracy is very important, yeah. And then finally, the last one. So we have three identical shapes. Así vamos avanzando poco a poco. So the next thing I'm going to do is we look, I want to look at these two points here, this corner and this corner, which are pointing towards each other. Mm -hmm. And I want to connect those two points with a, a crease, which is a mountain fold. And it connects those two points. And I'm going to begin not by putting the crease in, but just by rolling the paper around my, my middle finger. Mm -hmm just so that I'm sure that the crease is actually running exactly yes. between those two points. And even now, I'm not going to press it flat. Mm -hmm. I'm going to turn over because there are a number of places where everything lines up and I can show you perhaps. Okay. So you can see there's a crease which goes along here. I mean, it should, this corner should touch that crease. Mm -hmm. And equally, there is a crease which goes here which should line up with that crease. So there are three reference points. One, two, three on mm. each side of the paper. Okay. And if everything is lining up, only then am I going to put the crease in. Okay. Miren lo que acaba de decir es muy importante. Ustedes van a plegar hacia atrás de puntita con puntita. Cuando ya lo ponen atrás, tienen que ver esos tres puntos que alineen bien lo que es la línea que toque ese puntito y la de acá. Cuando ustedes vean que todo alinea, entonces lo marcan bien. Miren. That's precision, yeah. So I'm, I'm not hurrying. I want to make sure that everything mm -hmm. lines up before I actually firmly place the crease. Oh. After I'm sure that everything is lining up. Excellent. Dice que él no se toma, no lo hace con eh, apresurado, sino que él ve primero que todo alinea y ya después eh, hace pliegue. And the same thing with the final one. Excellent. Que cuando ustedes lo plieguen hacia atrás van a ver cómo exactamente todo coincide. Oh, this model, this design of yours is so beautiful. Okay, so we've done three, which are identical. I hope everybody's um, uh, uh, following and not left behind. Okay. Pregunta el maestro Abril si todos están bien. ¿Han entendido? ¿Vamos bien? 
No hay preguntas en este momento. Voy a, a encender los comentarios. Okay, so I'm going to move on. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to undo these creases that we just put in. Mm -hmm. Unfold these little edges. And I'm going to turn over mm -hmm. like this. Miren, de doblamos y los ponemos así para arriba, okay? Mm -hmm. So the next thing I'm going to do is to, to refold this first vertical crease as a mountain fold. Mm -hmm. But this corner is going to to move out to the right hand side. Okay. So I'm just putting back this this crease and this corner here is pointing to the right. Okay. And I'm going to do this I'm going to do the same thing on the left hand side. Okay. And the yeah. same obviously with all of them. Yeah, it looks like a little dress. It, it does. Yeah. Or a shirt. A shirt maybe. Yeah, miren, se ve como que fuera una camisita cuando ustedes lo Lo pliegan hacia atrás, esos triangulitos no los vayan a plegar. Déjenlos afuera, ¿ok? Ok, now the next thing is a little bit more difficult. Not difficult, but I need to show you exactly. There yeah. are precise reference points. The first reference point is this corner here. Mm -hmm. And the second is where, where there is this corner behind. Can you see this corner behind Can here? Can lift it a little bit more? Yes, sure. Can there. you see oh, that now? Yeah, now we can see, yes. Sorry. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm the, there okay, that yeah. yeah, so it's this point here and this corner here. Mm -hmm. And I what I need to do is to connect those two points okay. with a valley fold mm -hmm. without stretching the paper at the top okay. here. Okay. Miren esos dos puntos de referencia, la esquinita de arriba con el de abajo lo van a plegar así como lo está haciendo él uniendo esos dos puntos miren esa esquina and the same thing I'm, uh -huh. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side on the left hand side but you don't you mustn't stretch the paper like this el papel no se estira el papel tiene que quedar bien so it has to the, the crease should go exactly from this point to here Okay. And once again, we press it down flat. Okay. So the same thing over here. Lo mismo ahí, miren. Desde la esquinita hasta la línea, esa línea del vestidito, miren. Perfect. Sin estirar el papel. And finally, on this one, mm -hmm. I'm going to do this too. Okay. So that's all three done. Excellent. Great. Okay. Definitely now I'm works. now I'm going to turn over. So once again, it looks like a, a dress or a shirt. And I'm going to unfold these two uh, creases back to the center. Okay. Like this. Plegarlos nuevamente hasta el centro, miren. So I, I concentrate on this one to begin with. Mm -hmm. Now you can see that there is a, an existing crease here. Mm -hmm which stops when it gets to this diagonal. Yeah. But in fact, what we need to do is to make a new crease mm -hmm. through all these layers, which connects this point here to this point here. Okay. And to do that, we have to fold down everything mm -hmm. from the top, lining up mm -hmm. uh, with those existing creases, but putting a crease across these central layers. Okay. And as you're folding that down, it's, it's helpful if you can keep these two corners here close together so they don't spread. Miren, vamos a unir las dos esquinitas que está ahí, lo vamos a plegar hacia abajo. Y dice él que es importante que ustedes mantengan el papel unido, que no se le vayan las capitas de abajo, se vayan a mover. Así que manténganlos iguales, miren. Exactly, precision. 
And so this one over here, the same thing. Mm -hmm. Miren todo igual. Okay, so the three are done together. Mm -hmm. Now the next step is to fold this this wider colored this colored band over the top like this. Okay. The crease is already there, but we're just folding back through all the layers once again. Yeah. Miren, vamos a plegar ahí, ya está hecha la línea. Lo plegamos hacia arriba. Miren, si yo dejo el papel. Nothing very complicated so far. No, everything is okay. They are sending hearts, so that means they understand it. That, that everybody's happy. Yeah. This is good to hear. Right, now the next thing I'm going to turn over so that everything is white colored. Mm -hmm. Demosle vuelta a los tres. So, at the, at the moment, we, now the next step is to make this edge here touch the one at the top. So we've got a rectangle and we need to make this edge touch the mm -hmm. one at the top by putting a valley fold which will be exactly halfway between mm -hmm. the two edges. So yeah. you simply bring these two edges together, mm -hmm. line them up exactly, mm -hmm. and press flat. Miren, and, you can... esa base, vamos a en dos. and you can see on the other side, so I've turned over to this side now, mm -hmm. you can see that the, the crease that we're putting in is just a short gap between these raw edges below. Okay. So I'm going to do that with all of them. And once again, you can see this gap. So the crease should not go inside with this line here. There needs to be a gap. Okay. Necesitamos ese espacio pequeñito. And these creases that we're putting in now, these three creases need to be very firmly made. So once again, use your index finger, yeah. the, 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 the fingernail of your index finger to crease in mm -hmm. those creases very, very firmly. Esas tienen que plegarlos muy bien, tiene que ir fuerte, así que él dice que utilizan la uña. So, I'm going to undo everything back to that. I'm going to open up this zigzag shape. So here in the center, the crease that we've just put in is a mountain fold. Mm -hmm. And what I'd like you to do is to reverse it to make it into a valley fold. Because we've oh. folded it firmly, this should be fairly easy to do. Oh. But we need to make the crease go in both directions, both valley mm -hmm. and mountain. And I'd like you to just do it a couple of times to make sure the crease is really strong and really firm. Vamos so it goes both ways. Miren eso, vamos a revertir ese, esa montaña en valle, en montaña, en valle, porque lo que él quiere es que esa quede bien marcada para ambos lados. Miren, para los dos lados, ¿ok? Great. Same on the final one. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to go back mountain and valley, mountain and valley to make sure it's very neat. Mm -hmm. So it's not a new crease, it's just creasing the same crease in both directions. Yes. Okay, so let's turn over to this side, which is the planar of the two sides. One side you have a split in the center, mm -hmm. the other side is plain. Okay. Okay. So That's let's okay. look now at this central rectangle here that we've been working with and you can find you can see that it's made up into two smaller rectangles one here mm -hmm. and one here but they are in fact because of the proportions of the paper this uh, rectangle here is exactly the same uh, s proportions it's half the size but it's the same proportion as the overall shape oh. now, what, now what we need to do now is to connect this center point of this upper mountain fold mm -hmm. here's one point here is the other we're going to connect those two points with a mountain fold and once again the technique I'm going to use is to lift it off the table put my middle fingers 
approximately underneath those two points mm -hmm. and then roll the paper around mm -hmm. carefully to make sure before I put the crease in firmly that the crease runs exactly between the two points. Yes. Ok. Miren, aquí él quiere que ustedes hagan esa línea. Si ustedes se fijan, el, el rectángulo está dividido en dos. Entonces, vamos a hacer una línea que vaya desde la esquina superior hasta la esquina inferior de una mitad. Pero que toque justamente las esquinas. Miren. Y como él dice, él primero lo hace eh, dándole vuelta al papel. Él calcula primero que ya está bien alineado y le pasa lo que es el, 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 la uña para que quede fuerte. Miren. Vamos a hacerlo en los tres. So, um, we have to continue in the same way, mm -hmm. putting in the, the, the other diagonal of this same rectangle and the same thing over on this side. Okay. So, just we, we, we're repeating the process another three times. Okay. Vamos a hacer eso tres veces porque va a quedar una línea acá, otra línea acá, como una X en una mitad. Y en la otra mitad va a quedar una X también. Así que vamos a tener dos X. Toquen bien los puntos. Puntos, las esquinas, ok. Hope you can see what is it within camera range. Yes. I think I'm going too low a bit, aren't I, from time to time? I must be further up. Ok, so that's the next one. So when we've finished, that should be four uh, diagonals mm -hmm. in those two rectangles that I described earlier. Yes, they are like two letter X. Yes, they are. Mm -hmm. Miren, ahí tienen las dos X, una de un lado, otra del otro lado. Vamos a hacer lo mismo en las tres. So take your time to put those diagonal, diagonals in as accurately as possible mm -hmm. on each of the three uh, pieces pieces that we're folding. Yes. Miren, tomen su tiempo, dice él, para que exactamente vayan de punta a punta, que no va a ir ni arriba ni abajo, tienen que tocar exactamente las puntas. This is something I love about modulars. You do it the first time and after you can continue doing it yeah. easily without really thinking about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's two. Mm -hmm. Probably you finished before me. Dice él que probablemente ustedes terminen antes que él. But I'm not in a hurry to, I don't want to make any mistakes. Yeah. So I'm, I'm making sure that everything is as accurate mm -hmm. as I can make it. Yeah. Dice que él se está tomando su tiempo porque quiere que sea bien, bien, bien eh, exacto. Tiene que ser exacto. No quiere cometer errores. And the same thing over here. Después van a comprender por qué necesitan las dos X. Miren. Okay, so we've now got we've now got three which are identical. Mm -hmm. So we finished the folding. Oh. Now what we have to do now is is to just um, uh, make the sh the three dimensional shape from this flat form that we've got here. Mm -hmm. So let's begin with this. I'm going to fold it, turn over, so that these diagonals that we just put in are valley folds, mm -hmm. and I'm going to start by folding up this colored section over the top and I'm folding down this top section which so that it lies over the top yeah and having done that if you lift it off the table you'll find that just below this white section there is a pocket here there are two corners which you can open up to find this pocket mm -hmm. and this a section will fit neatly into that pocket. Okay. So we're going to do that with all of them. Vamos a hacer lo mismo con los tres. Es como un sobre. Plegamos hacia arriba la primera parte y la parte superior la encajamos adentro de la parte inferior. Miren, como un sobrecito. It's like a little envelope. It is. Now. It's, it's very much like an envelope. 
Okay, so that's the three done. So the next thing we did, at the moment it's completely flat, and now we have to start making it into this three-dimensional shape, which is the, the finished uh, part of the cube. Yeah. So I'll show you how to do that. The first thing to do is to turn it over. Now this white section should turn over so that it's pointing towards you on mm -hmm. the table. Okay. And the next thing to do is to fold the left-hand side over to the right using this central crease line mm -hmm. so that we can see the white section is this way. La parte de blanca queda hacia abajo, okay? Y ahorita le va a dar volumen a la pieza porque ya está terminada. So I'm going to hold it between my uh, thumb and forefinger of my left hand and I'm going to use my little finger here mm -hmm. to put into the lower part mm -hmm. of it's like a bit like a book or a oh. newspaper. Mm -hmm. Now what I'm going to do is push up using my little finger. I'm going to put my finger right into this part mm -hmm. and here push up. Ahí van a empujar con el dedo chiquitito. Miren, es como un libro. Meten en la primera parte y empujan. Y ya les queda de esa forma. Miren. So that helps the, if you put your finger inside and push up mm -hmm. the, the inner section of, the, of this crease. You'll see that this crease goes a mountain fold mm -hmm. here and you can see inside this hole that you can see a mountain fold there too. And you've done it by pushing up using the, the yes. last joint of your little finger. Exactly. So I'm going Miren to do that bonito. with the other, the others. Vamos a hacer lo mismo. Miren cómo lo hace él, como un libro. La parte blanca hacia abajo, apuntando hacia su cuerpo. Y con el dedo chiquitito, empujar. Miren. Y ahí agarra volumen. So, lo hacen de los dos lados, miren. So I've made this little... Dos par, um, dos. So the same thing with the final one, making sure we've got the white section pointing towards us. Uh -huh. In half. Blanca, apuntando hacia abajo, miren. Y ahora con el and this, this goes into the back pocket, uh -huh. as before, uh -huh. and as you're closing, as you're opening the thing into three dimensions, you push the white uh -huh. section all the way uh -huh. into the pocket, and it forms a really solid uh -huh. uh, shape. Now to complete the the finished form. All we have to do is reform these V-shaped mountain folds by pushing mm -hmm. down in the center. Miren, ahí van a empujar ustedes eso. Y la parte blanca que quedaba hacia abajo entra totalmente al bolsillo. Entonces ustedes le empujan hacia adentro del bolsillo y ahora solo esas letras B las van a empujar y le van a dar forma. Miren. So that's two. Two and the last one. And the wow. last one, like that. And now it's a small challenge mm -hmm. to put them together. This is one third of a cube. Mm -hmm. And you'll find that they fit together to form a cube very satisfyingly. Exactly. Ya tienen las tres piezas. Ya pueden poner una encima de la otra. Y ya tienen ustedes lo que es el cubo. Beautiful. <laughs> okay, so that's how to fold it. Wow, yeah. that's I'm going wonderful. To, I'm going Let to go see. back to the seat. Now you can see Look me. Look at all the hearts that are coming for you. <laughs> wow, they did it. Okay, so I'll just show you on my, if I can just get into my laptop. Okay. I can show you, I can show you where the, uh, the diagrams are on my website. Okay. Le va a mostrar ahorita dónde están los diagramas en su página por si quieren hacer ustedes los conectores y se animan a hacer el cubo de una forma más, eh, más complicada. Miren qué lindo, qué lindo. Su página es Brilliant Origami. So, Miren qué lindo el cubo. Precioso, precioso. A mi niño le encanta. If you My son down, loves your cube. <laughs> and if you scroll down, you find a, a, a link to diagrams. Uh -huh. And here a diagram. Diagrams, and Mira. there are diagrams, diagrams for many, many other things. But the one you want is this one here. Mm -hmm. It's rather a small thumbnail, but you yep. can see it says Brillic Cubes. And if you click on this, at the bottom here is a link to the 
the diagram, yes. Ahí está el diagrama, mira. Ahí está el diagrama de lo que acabamos de plegar y también de los conectores. Por si ustedes quieren, um, por si ustedes quieren hacer lo que es el cubo más complicado, el que lleva 12 piezas, mira. So what we've done is up to step 20, we've made the, we've made the three units which mm -hmm. will just fit together neatly as a cube. Now the next bit is showing you how to con to make the connector. So you uh -huh. take a a square like this and you cut it into four strips and then you before um making the uh the the individual units three dimensional, you fit in Mm -hmm. the, the one of these pieces and then you fold it up including the um the connector mm -hmm. and then you have to do everything simultaneously yeah. so here you find you can see there are, in this first part <coughs> this shows you how to make to connect two little cubes together <coughs> and this is quite ingenious because as you flex this double cube Mm -hmm. the, the cubes of the, the two colors become scrambled so you have some red parts in this side and some blue parts in this side yeah. and then the next bit is to show you how to connect four mm -hmm. cubes together which is a good bit more complicated and takes yeah. quite a long time but the principle is the same but you end up with the final version which is this shape over here mm -hmm. you can see this and these are some of the the um transformation you can obtain. Yes. So there we are. Excellent. <coughs> Acuérdense, la página es Brilliant Origami. Y cuando ustedes hacen los conectores, si quieren conectar cuatro cubos, ahí está cómo hacen ustedes los conectores. Una página la van a cortar en cuatro pedazos y lo conectan y pueden hacer una estructura más complicada. Oh, somebody's asking what year was the Brilliant Cube invented? Uh, I'm not sure uh, maybe um 2013 2014 i don't remember exactly maybe six or seven years ago <clears throat> you don't want to tell us because I can't, you are but... you are no 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 not that you don't want to tell us because you are very modest but your name is not david brill your name is <laughs> david brilliant ah well that, this is why when I wrote a book, I called it Brilliant Origami. And so my website is also called Brilliant Origami. I love and, that. And also my uh, my Instagram page is called Brilliant, Brilliant Origami. So it's easy yeah. to find. It fits you very well. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> it's somebody asking, did you invent an earlier variation? Uh, or an earlier uh, version? Not really. Not really. I, I, I never made, I made some other flexing uh, toys which I sh uh, were in my display case and if you'd like I can just show you those again if you just okay. give me I'll bring them Melissa over and show Moreno you Moreno says that we wait for you soon at Sarag in Zaragoza Miren qué honor platicar con él y que nos cuente que es amigo de Tomoko Fuse que conoció a Don Shuso Fujimoto yo estoy así ah en shock que conoció aquí de Yoshizawa Dios mío Okay, he's gonna bring something to show you, so that's why he's not there. Yeah, he comes okay, back. so I'm going to go over to my other place so you can see how these things work. So the first, the thing I made many years ago was this, which is called the, the Yoshimoto Cube. I love that one, the Yoshimoto Cube, yeah. So in fact, in fact, if you just give me a couple of seconds, mm -hmm. I can show you the original version of, of the original thing on which it was based. Okay, so Alison, you were asking for another version. He says that he has that cube, that is the Yoshimoto uh, Cube, that is one version of this one, and he's going to bring another version of that cube. So this, this actually is the original, it's, this is not paper, this is this is a plastic toy which you can buy they're not very cheap you can buy from the uh the museum of modern art in new york mm -hmm. you can buy these things in the museum shop and it looks like a folding cube but exactly. you probably know that it separates yeah. into two into two stars mm -hmm. oh look miren se separan estrellas wow so and you can these these also uh, fit together like that what? so it's a very oh, ingenious thing it's, it's a little miracle so this is not my invention this mm -hmm. is invented invented by 
a Japanese designer called uh, Yoshi, uh, Yoshimoto. Uh -huh. Uh, and it actually says on it somewhere Yoshimoto Cube. Mm. Uh, but I wanted to make an origami version the of origami this. Origami version. Mm. So, I, so this is as close as I could get. I couldn't go any smaller. It doesn't quite match the size. Yes. But it was supposed to be a replica mm -hmm. of the original Yoshimoto Cube. And it, the colour is fairly close to the original. Yes, it's really close. But it's not, not as solid, unfortunately. That's beautiful. So that was the so I made that many years ago in the late late nineteen eighties I think or nineteen ninety perhaps. That's so that beautiful. is that. So this is another another thing which is I call the wedge flexi cube, which doesn't split up into stars but also flexes. That's beautiful too. Wow! I love your action origami. It's so, so relaxing this is, to be playing with it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it is, uh, but not so relaxing to fold it. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's the, the, this other thing which I, I'm very fond of. This is a, a bit. It's it's. This is also a similar to the Yoshimoto cube. It hasn't got any stars. Uh -huh. But these. This is made out of triangular blocks. Yeah. Which 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 um, hinge together in in the same way. Oh. With a separate uh, uh, locking or a separate uh, connecting unit, and this makes a lot of really wonderful shapes, I think. And it's surprising. You think that just because yes. it's it makes many many shapes, which I find very, very intriguing. Um, and in fact, but it's got a lot in common with the Yoshimoto cube. If you mm -hmm. take the the original Yoshimoto cube. Yeah. And look, I, I analyzed where the hinges were. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, it's, maybe it's possible to make this same shape instead of out of, I just need to get this the right way around because there's only one way it fits together. So if you look at, this is, this is a fairly well-known uh, mm -hmm. toy, yeah. just with cubes, without mm -hmm. separating into stars. But yeah. it's very for this to work. It's very important that the hinges between the cubes are in the right place. And I th I thought maybe I can make a variation of the simple version just with cubes. But instead of you keep using cubes, I use triangular blocks like this. Yeah, triangular. But in other words, half of a cube, and it works in a. It also flexes in exactly the same way. But the shapes it makes are very. Uh, fascinating and intriguing. Yeah, they're so really good. And you can find instructions to make this on also on the website. I have got Woo! some instructions on. So Hay you can. instructions para hacer ese en la website de él. Así que si les interesa hacer ese también en la website de él, ustedes pueden encontrar lo que son lo que es cómo cómo plegar ese. Así que prepárense. Wow. So there we are. Thank you so, so going, much. Wow, back, that's beautiful. I'm going back to me now. So here, yeah. I, here I am again. So I hope you all managed everything. David, David, what can I tell you? I really enjoyed my our chat. It was so enriching. It was oh. amazing to talk to a person who knows a lot. I would love to spend a whole afternoon with you, folding and talking. You are such an amazing person. You are very, very nice. Thank you very much. You too. Thank you. Miren, no podría dejar de, para, de platicar con él porque él es una persona muy linda. Él es super positivo. Miren qué lindo, qué lindo. Thank you, thank you so much for your kindness. People are telling you that. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you, thank you for showing us everything. Okay. And uh, oh my God, thank you so much. Oh, okay. <laughs> One of the great things about origami is uh, that there's very little competition. Everybody's happy to share the things that they've that they've made. They're happy to. No, nobody is in it for themselves. It's a joint. It's a a, a communal uh, activity. It's People are open exactly. and uh, willing to share. Oh, that's, that's, thank that's you, because amazing. you are very nice, very kind. Miren qué lindo, dice él que algo que le gusta de la comunidad de origami es que ellos comparten, lo hacen con mucha eh, emoción, con el afán de dar, y por favor, 
lo etiquetan a él cuando pliegan sus cubos para que él pueda verlos. Get ready, because many people are going to tap you to show you their cubes. Please, I'm very happy if you did. Thank you very much. <laughs> you can find me on Instagram or uh, Facebook, and I'm very happy to see what, what you've done. I'd, li I'd like to see what you've done. So thank you very much. Dice que le va a encantar ver los cubos de ustedes, así que por favor lo etiquetan, búsquenlo en Instagram, eh, David Real. Van a encontrar su página, tiene pinturas nada más, pero es él. I was telling them that your Instagram has only paintings, but it's you. There is, there's some origami, but not very much. No, well, yeah. If you scroll down, you'll find bits and pieces of origami, because it's more recent. Yes, thank you so much, David. Okay, it's my pleasure. Good luck with everybody, to everybody. Thank Stay you. Safe. Be happy. Have a wonderful evening. Thank and you. Uh, believe me, I am going to be paying attention to all the workshops online that you give because I want to be there. You are <laughs> such a delightful person. Thank you very much. Okay. Gracias a todos los que nos acompañaron. Esperamos sus etiquetas. We're going to be waiting for your tags. Please tag okay. Mr. David Bridge. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody. Adiós a todos. Bye-bye.